All right, let's pick up right where we left off. I've, I've kind of recreated um, the example that we were uh, kind of getting into just at the end of the last video. So, so let's dig deep on that. We want to find the volume of the region created by uh, rotating f of x is x squared around the x-axis, um, just looking at the interval from 0 to 2. Right, so here is a particularly poorly drawn x squared. It looks more like a straight line than a, a parabola, so sorry about that. I guess I could have redrawn it and start started again, but um, it's kind of late and I'm kind of tired, so we're just going to go with it. Um, so if I just do an integral, right, if all I go is 0 to 2 and I do x squared dx, that's going to get me, right, the area under the curve. We've been doing that. That's, that's the whole shtick. That's the fundamental theorem. We're good to go. And the concept, right, is that these x squared values represent the height values, right? It's just the height of the function at each of these points. So what I'm doing here is if I'm taking this area, right, this two-dimensional area, and I rotate it, the new picture that gets created, right, if I kind of rotate like this, I essentially kind of get a, a mirror image of the curve underneath it. And, uh, right, the rotation is maybe kind of going like that. And I get this, right, old-timey hearing aid, kind of hold it up to your ear uh, looking thing. Or if you've ever seen, like, an old-timey record player, I'm starting to think this is a shape that <laughs> existed a lot more in old-timey times. Uh, I'm trying to think of a contemporary uh, example of where you'd see this shape, and I'm coming up short. Um, in any event, right, any of these sort of amplifying kind of devices... Um, you know, megaphone or something, right, kind of has the same kind of shape. Um, in any event, right, you're getting this sort of a cone kind of three-dimensional shape. The, the big thing here, right, is that it's, it's a three-dimensional figure. Um, and so what we said is to, to take this from just an area under the curve, to take it and expand it out to a volume, right, what I need, so if I go from zero to two, but rather than integrating a height function. I integrate an area function. The book actually, I think, kind of calls this, you know, A of X or something, right? An area function. I'm just going to write area um, to kind of match what I did here when I said height. Um, this should get us the volume of our figure, right? Of our sort of rotated, created figure. Um, so the catch is, how do I, how do I sort of represent the area um, that I'm creating, right? What would this area function look like? And, and the idea here is if I rotate this and then I, I take a slice, right? What are the height values? Well, relative to the original area, the 2D space, the heights are just these individual slices, right? So f of x here, a slice is just going to equal... The height, right? It just is. It, it just is the height function. is just is a straight line. If I have the area, right? Or I'm sorry, rather. Um, if I have my 3D shape, my my sort of volume, and I take a slice, what I get is a circle, right? Or what we would call a disc. Um, this, of course, right? I might as well be talking about, <laughs> you know. Uh, right, things that look like, you know, CDs or, or records, right? I know that you guys are young, but you're aware of what a CD or record looks like. It's a big flat disc. Um, or we said in the last video, think of it as like getting deli meat, right, from the deli. You have a big hunk of turkey, right? A big three-dimensional just like loaf uh, of turkey or ham or whatever you want. And they take it up to the slicer, the deli slicer, and you end up with these circular at the deli, right? Not not perfect circles, probably, unless you're getting pepperoni or something. Um, right? You get these uh, circular discs. So the area here is going to be a circle type area. So what's the area of a circle? Of 
course, pi times r squared. So what's the radius that's happening here? The radius of one of these disks is going to be, right, the radius there is going to end up being the same thing as whatever the height of the function is. Right, so your radius is going to equal the height, which is whatever our original f of x values were. So the whole setup to find the volume, right, going from 0 to 2, I want pi r squared. This is all with respect to x, right? So this is an x interval from 0 to 2 on the x-axis. So this has to be dx. Those things need to be in sync. We'll do some examples where we flip the boundaries and we do this from the y perspective. That can happen. That's allowed. Um, it's different, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Hang on. i got to get a better system for when I need to move my paper up. Because as it is now, it runs into this thing that I've got. But that's a me problem. That's not a you problem. I can solve this on my own time. This is your time. This is learning time. In any event. So my volume should be pi r squared. Pi is just a constant, right? So, so, so pi is there. So 0 to 2, pi, and then radius, right? The radius of this should be the height. So this should be times what we would think of as the height squared with respect to x. But of course, what was our height? If not, um, the original guy, x squared. Um, now, what we're going to end up doing, right? <clears throat> and of course, there's going to be some variations here. But just in the most basic sense, what we've got is, right, we've made a cone. We've made this three-dimensional cone. We made it by rotating the, the sort of graph x squared around the axis, right? Sort of rotating and creating this kind of a 3D shape. Um, and so the radius here is, is the same thing. It sort of syncs up with the height of the original function, which in this case was x squared. Um, so, so if we integrate and sort of add up all of these different areas of the disks, what we would get from, from sort of slicing our three-dimensional um, volume down into two-dimensional slices, we're getting circles the radius of the circle syncs up with the height. So I get pi times the radius squared, which is pi times x squared squared. So that's a decent chunk of work. Well, that's a lot of talking, but honestly, it's it's not a, a ton of work. Once you kind of get used to the way this setup goes, things will move along pretty quickly. Um, there are some limitations here, right? Because now we're not just integrating whatever the function is, it needs to still work if we throw a square on the outside. Something is as sort of simple as, as x squared, right? x squared squared would be x to the 4. So pi times x to the 4, if I actually start doing antiderivative stuff, right? Pi is, as always, along for the ride. This would be x to the 5 over 5. And this is going to run from 0 to 2. Uh, pi is here. Pi is a part of our lives now, so a lot of these volumes will end up in terms of pi. That's fine, it just is what it is, so we'll live with it. Um, if I start to plug my values in, this is pi times, right, two to the five over five minus pi times zero to the five over five. Um, oh gosh, we're running out of space. I always gotta watch it when we get down to the end here. Um, what the heck is two to the five? Two to the four is 16, so that's 32. So this is like 32 times pi over five minus zero, right? That's just zero. So my volume here ends up as something like 32 pi over five. Um, if I'm being honest, right, if, if, if I'm grading this and it's not just the, uh, the homework grading it, you know, 75%, 80% of what I care about, 90% of what I care about is the setup. I really, really want to make sure that you have the setup right. The rest of this is, is sort of boilerplate uh, anti-derivative stuff and then sort of subbing in. Uh, important, right? If you need to actually get an answer, be, being able to get to the answer is of course very important. But most of the brain power here, a lot of, of, of the sort of mental work that you're doing in these problems is really about the setup, right? What's the setup that you're trying to get? So in this case, right, pi times the height squared, 
um, is going to get you there. So that's what we're looking for. So you're always thinking in terms of the disks, pi r squared, that you get when you sort of slice this volume, right? Kind of slice it kind of right down the line, put it through the deli slicer. Um, so we'll keep going in the next videos. Uh, obviously, there's, there's sort of more to do here conceptually and, and, and obviously more examples to, to see.